Capture One dropped a new version of Build 16.2 today. There's a number of improvements and some new features that uh, I'm gonna get into. There's a lot of AI going on under the hood that will benefit you and me as a photographer. I, I love some of these improvements and features. So I'm gonna dig into it and we're gonna take a quick look at what's going on. Okay, so under the improvements category, first of all, we have improved consistency in smart adjustments. The major improvement is that there's greater consistency across batches of images. And this is something to note is that if you set a reference photo in your smart adjustments and you apply it to a single photo, it's not gonna know if that photo is part of a larger batch. So if you wanna get consistency across an entire session, you're gonna wanna set your reference and then select all the images in that session or a, a big portion of the images in that session and then hit apply so that it will process the batch as a whole. It will take a look at all the images and, and uh, get uh, a better understanding of, of how to process these images so that they maintain consistency across the entire uh, range of images. If you just do it from image to image to image, uh, it's not gonna be as consistent because Capture One, again, doesn't know that that's part of a larger series of images. The next improvement is that we have faster preview generation. This is a big issue for a lot of people. What you're going to see is you're gonna see an increase in raw image preview generation of up to 27%, and for DNG images, up to 44% faster preview view generation. This also applies to tethering. When you're tethering, you might notice that like when you trigger and that photo's coming in, there's a slow process uh, for that image to from, from the point you hit the trigger to when that image comes up on your screen, nice and sharp. Capture One is reporting improvement speeds, uh, rendering previews of up to 19%. So all around faster image preview generation is a great thing. Excellent improvement. Next we have improvements in Capture One Live. This is Capture One's online image gallery sharing so that you can be in one physical location and your client can be in another physical location and they can be looking at images and selecting images. There are two major improvements to Capture One Live in this version. One is email notifications and the other one is new reviewer roles. So let's start with email notifications. First off, you're now gonna get a reminder that your online connection is gonna expire three days before the expiration date. And then secondly, you're gonna get a collection of all of the comments on an online collection when that collection expires or when you decide to stop sharing that online collection. You're gonna get an email with all the comments uh, in, in one email. And then next, Capture One Live now has new reviewer roles, and they are and they are can rate and comment and can tag and comment. If you set the reviewer role to can rate and comment, the reviewer will not be able to change the color tags of images. And if you set the reviewer role to can tag and comment, the, the reviewer will not be able to change the rating of images. All right, so let's get into some of the new features in Capture One. First off, we have wireless tethering for some select Fuji cameras. And these are the Fujifilm X series, the T5, the H2, and the H2S. Previously, those weren't supported for wireless tethering, uh, but now they are. Secondly, we have custom shortcuts for styles and edit width. And this is something that I think a lot of people, like myself included, the amount of times that I have to right click edit with Adobe Photoshop in a session is kind of frustrating, but now I can set a custom shortcut. All you have to do is you can go up to the edit menu to your custom shortcuts, and then you're gonna see a new tab for custom shortcuts and for styles and edit with. You can just select what it is that you wanna do and set a shortcut. I'm going to set an edit with Adobe Photoshop shortcut to control shift F9. That's a shortcut that I also use within Photoshop on every image that I process that preps my file to get editing. What you might want to do is if you're coming from Lightroom, you could hit like Control E to do edit with Adobe Photoshop and push that out in the same way that you might with like export in Lightroom. You can also, if you go over to the styles panel, if you right click on a style, you can just jump right to that custom shortcut menu and set the shortcut for that style. If there's a style that you use very frequently for uh, black and white conversions, for example, you can apply that style very quickly. So one of the first big uh, AI features 
in this release is automatic dust removal. The spot removal tool has been renamed dust removal. This tool is still in beta. It's, it's available to you, but that just means that they're gonna be continuing to work on it and improve it. Maybe you were out shooting uh, landscapes in the desert setting and you know some dust got into your camera while you're changing lenses. Now uh, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, you can, this is gonna take care of that very quickly. So my Canon 60D, uh, I, I found that it had a lot of sensor dust. Being able to just hit auto and Capture One being able to locate those spots and fix them and correct them, that's gonna be fantastic and save a, a lot of people a lot of time, especially people who are desert landscape photographers. And there's a shortcut for this, it's just Alt O. The big, big letter O, like the like the spot removal cursor, but Alto is going to uh, apply that automatic dust removal uh, on your image. The next new feature is face focus, which is available in the cull and import tools. When you're importing images or you're using the culling tool, instead of having to double click to get the image full size and wait for it to uh, do a preview, which previews are now faster, there's a little window in which you can see the uh, face and you can set the zoom level to 50%, 100%, 200%, limit it to the eye, or limit it to the face. This is gonna be much faster for you to not have to constantly zoom in to see if the eyes are in focus or if the face is in focus when you're culling your images. You'll have the larger view to get an overall sense of the image, and then you'll have the close-up view that you set to your preference to see if the eyes or face uh, are in focus, and then you can select in or select out from there. And then finally, Capture One has introduced some integration with Frame.io. Frame IO is a website that is now owned by Adobe, but it's a collaborative workspace for video creators. And this update is Mac only. I don't use frame.io. I don't have people that I collaborate with and I don't use Macs. So this isn't a feature that I can really go into depth about. If that's something that you wanna look at, then take a look at the new version of Capture One 16.2. It's available on their website. You can go download it now. I hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching. For more videos on Capture One, click this link right here to see a playlist of Capture One videos. Thanks so much. Take care.